So this first little demonstration that I'm going to do here is called the blue bottle. All right. Now, this might not look very blue right now, uh, but if I give it a little bit of a shake, you see it turns blue. And if we let it sit for a minute, for a longer minute, Okay, you can see it's starting to go back to colorless. Okay, so the blue is almost gone here. So I shake it again, and it turns blue. And if we let it sit, it'll go back to colorless, and it'll keep oscillating back and forth between blue and colorless. So what's happening here, I have a dye in here called methylene blue. That's what's producing the blue color that's in here right now. It starts out colorless because this is in a solution that contains sugar and sodium hydroxide. Specifically, glucose is the sugar that we're using here. Okay, that makes it turn colorless like it's doing right now. When I shake the bottle, Oxygen from the air up here goes into the water and it oxidizes the dye. Uh, so it does this reaction where essentially it takes a couple of electrons away from the dye. That's what's called oxidation. And it changes the structure of the dye a little bit, which makes it change color. Okay. And then the sugar and sodium hydroxide that's in here does the backwards reaction, which is called reduction. It adds those electrons back to the dye and turns it back to colorless. So it'll keep on oscillating between colorless and blue as long as those chemicals hold out. Now, this one is a really similar demonstration. Okay. Uh, this one is called the traffic light. So right now we've got one of the colors of a traffic light in there. We've got yellow. If I shake it a little bit, I've got red, and if I shake it a lot more, I've got green, okay? And if we let it sit, it will go backwards through those color changes. It'll go back to red and then back all the way to yellow. So it's the same idea here. We just have a different dye. It's called indigo carmine is the dye that we use in this one, okay? And this one just happens to have two different oxidation states. So if I shake it a little bit, it oxidizes part way, and we go from yellow to red. And if I shake it a lot more, it oxidizes it the rest of the way, and it goes from red to green. And then again, there's sugar and sodium hydroxide in here, and that will send it back the other way. And you can see now it's back to red, and if it, uh, it's got to sit for a little bit longer before it does this. But eventually, it will go all the way back to yellow, and then we'll be able to do the same color changes again. Okay, so this next one we're going to do here is called elephant toothpaste. All right, so you know the amount of toothpaste you use in the morning. We're going to make the amount an elephant would need. So we're going to start out with some ordinary bubble soap. So we'll go ahead and put a little bit of that in our cylinders here. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to put is some hydrogen peroxide, which we've got in this little container here. Now, hydrogen peroxide is something you might put on a cut, but not this hydrogen peroxide. The stuff you put on a cut is like 3% peroxide. This is 30%. Uh, you do not put this on an injury or you will have a bigger injury uh, in its place. Okay. Uh, this is even more concentrated than the stuff they use in like bleaching hair and stuff like that. I think that's about either 6 or 12 percent, something like that. So uh, since we're from ASU, we'll put some ASU food colors in here. So we'll put yellow in one and we'll put blue in another one. Give that a stir. 
Now you'll notice nothing is, uh, is happening yet. There's still one more chemical we need to add in order to make something happen, and that is our sodium iodide. So we'll go ahead and pour a glug of that in each one of these bottles, and we'll see what happens. Whoa. So there's our elephant toothpaste, okay? Now what this is is not, of course, toothpaste. What it is is basically silk suds. So what happens when we mix the sodium iodide together with the hydrogen peroxide is that the peroxide decomposes and it gives off oxygen gas. And so what the oxygen gas is doing is it's blowing bubbles into the bubble soap that we put in here. So it comes foaming out of there. It looks kind of thick like toothpaste, and there's a lot of it, so that's why it's called elephant toothpaste.